I was in active addiction before I even knew it. Um, so I called DCS and told them, hey, I'm an addict and I need help. Instead of them helping me, they had me come into the office with all three of my kids and um, they set us around a big table. They all met us at the office. So we're sitting around this big table and I'm getting told of basically how bad of a mother I am, um, how worthless and useless I was, and that they were taking my kids and they wasn't going to let me kiss them goodbye. Um, so, that was a hard day. It crushed me like a ton of bricks. From then, it just kept getting worse and worse. I eventually became an IV user. I was doing any and every drug. I had several overdoses, and I was entirely okay with it. I lost full contact with my two oldest, but my youngest one, his, um, I had to be supervised, but his, ma his mama always let me be there, always. It's not that I didn't want to be, it's just I didn't even want to be alive. You know, I just didn't, um, I hated every waking moment. And I, somehow I justified me being dead would be better for the kids. And I don't know why I thought that would have been better, but I, to me, it would have been better. I, I was living in a building at my stepmom's, um, staying where I wasn't even wanted, sleeping where I wasn't even wanted, just wherever I could just lay down at. Um, and I was, of course, I was on the run. Um, I was sitting in that building and Caleb kept calling me. Um, he kept calling and calling. And I would answer and I would promise him that I was coming, but I wouldn't never make it. I was sitting in that building and I was praying. I was like, God, you've got to change me. You have got to. I am so sick of this. I am so sick of this. Um, well, I guess I should back up. After that, I had overdosed. I had just, I said, I'm done. I'm done. I, I meant it. Um, long story short, my dad come. My dad Narcan me. And when I come to, that's when I said, Lord, you have got to pull me out of this. I can't love myself. I don't want to be here anymore. If you're not going to make me better, take me out because I don't want to do this anymore. And there was this girl that had come into jail and uh, she was telling me, she was like, if you really want to change, you know, um, there's a place called Bridges to Recovery. If it had not been for Bridges, I would have been dead. I had completely just given up all hope. I just didn't want to live anymore. I wanted to die, but didn't have the guts to do it myself. So I would just do anything and everything just to end it. I felt so hopeless. I felt like nobody cared. I was staying where I wasn't wanted and just, I thought, well, my kids have went this long without me. I really, I didn't realize how much they love me. Um, and that's one thing my friend helped me with also was how much your kids love you. She'd always say, always call them, always, you know, be persistent, show them that you're, you've changed. Um, and that, that really helped me. I just never, she, I never thought that they would ever forgive me. Now I have two of them that love me. I know they love me. I'm sure they're upset with me and stuff, but I'm, I'm working. I might spend the rest of my life trying to make it up and show that I'm different, but it's, it, it would be worth it to me. So I have a home a car. I still work at Food City. I'm an assistant manager for produce. Um, I'm about to get married. <laughs> um, we're try we're looking for a house. Um, that we've hit some little speed bumps, but I mean, it's just, it's just, we're having normal life things. Um, and it's taken me a while to realize that, but it is, this is just normal, what normal people do. Um, I see myself getting my oldest son. He's he's 13, so that's going to be a little bit. But I know he's coming home. He will if I have to start with phone calls. I know the biggest difference with Bridges, and because I have went to a other um, a, a halfway house, whatever, and um, it just didn't work. It didn't click. I left. It was it was bad. But God wasn't in the picture, so I know that the thing with Bridges is that. 
they put God first. I, th without a doubt, I know that, and that is what has changed me and made me successful today. There's help out there to do it. Reach out to somebody. <laughs> there is people out there that care. It don't matter what time or day, just reach out. Don't sit and be ashamed and wallow in your tears because it's going to take you. <laughs> Sometimes rock bottom means death. It don't have to mean it. I mean, I, I have been literally, I'm a walking testimony. I, um, everyone just wrote me off as a lost cause and Bridges didn't. They took me in, they loved me, and they showed me, you know, you are somebody. You're God's favorite. You, you, your kids love you. Family loves you. I love you, you know, um, and they just took me in at my weakest and just wrapped their arms around me and just let me know you are somebody. And your past is not who you are today. Well, I was an alcoholic for a good 10 years. Um, I had tried throughout my life to go to treatment centers, get help, stop on my own. Um, never worked. Um, I was hopeless. I, I didn't care. Um, when I finally decided to go to Bridges was I took the advice of my cousin, Ray. Um, she had tried to get me into Bridges for years. My lowest point was um, probably whenever I was extremely intoxicated and I had a seizure and I went to the hospital um, and right before the, uh, that I called out to God. I was hopeless. I wanted to live. I didn't want to live anymore. I had, I didn't want to live. For years, my cousin Ray Lawson um, told me about Bridges. She had went through the home um, before. Um, I've always admired her because I knew what that home at um, I knew she had found God there, um, and I knew that was my only answer because I had tried everything else before and nothing helped. Um, I saw the change in her life, and I wanted what she had. I wanted my daughter back. I wanted my life back. I wanted my family back. I wanted me back. I didn't think anything was going to work, but I was willing to give it a try. I had no other option. It was death for me, so I wanted to give it a try. Um, at first, it wasn't easy. The first couple months, I wasn't sleeping a lot, um, but I knew I wanted it. Um, and I knew I had to fight for my life. I think when it turned around for me, the first couple months, I wasn't getting any sleep. Um, I was all over the place, my head, my thoughts. Um, I think my turning point, my turning point was whenever Miss Georgia gave me my Bible. And when I wasn't sleeping, I couldn't understand why I wasn't sleeping. And I think she told me, she said, that's probably when the Lord is wanting you to get up and get close to me. And that's when I pulled out that Bible. And at night I would sit on the couch by myself and just read. And um, that's when I think all things started to change for me. When I scratched up to the Lord, that's what my Grammy always told me to do. When times got tough to scrunch up to the Lord, boy, did I scrunch up to me. That's when things started to change in my life and my heart started to change and I began to have hope. You know, I was always scared to, I think, open up the Bible because I didn't understand it. Um, but it started to make sense to me. He, 
um, I started to understand him. He started to, he started to make sense and he came into my heart. Um, and another important part of my early recovery that gave me hope was whenever my daughter that I lost whenever she was three, um, I was allowed to see her at Bridges. She came into town from Texas and the home allowed me to see her for two weeks, as much time as I was, that I could see her. And when I saw her, I knew that she wasn't upset with me or mad with me and that she just wanted her mom back. Those two, those two things was what put a fire in me. God and the hope and the love for my daughter that they're wonderful. They're not staff, they're family. The girls are sisters, the, fam the staff is family. I don't look at them as staff. There's, they're my sisters in Christ. I, we lean on each other, we love each other. We know where each other's been. We've seen each other's fight. We've seen each other's struggles. One thing about Bridges that I want everybody to know is I know they helped save one life and that was mine. And I know they're saving many other lives and have saved many other women's lives. And that's all they want to do because you're helping to save a life. What's more precious than that? <laughs> My heart now, uh, you're gonna make me cry again. It's changed. Everything's changed. My mouth, the way I talk, the way I think, the way I look at people, what, who I and what I surround myself with. My days are changed. Everything's changed. My heart is changed. It's not the same heart. God changed it, and it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. I don't fear nothing now. I don't have to. There's hope. And I don't know what next week looks like. I don't know what next year looks like. But it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Billy, to me, is a big part of what Bridges is all about. And um, when she came to Bridges, she decided that she didn't want to be called by her name which was good because we already had another Brittany there. <laughs> and uh, so she went by Billy, and that's how we know her. We know her by Billy. And um, Billy was a handful. She was a charmer. She was a drama queen. She was, she was just a contagious person, one that you could really love, you could, she just was Billy. I got a call that Billy was gone. And um, to be honest, I wasn't going to go to Billy's house. I was going to find Brittany, her best friend. And Brittany and Billy graduated together. And I knew that it was going to be bad because they were so tight and they were so close. And I wanted to go make sure that she was OK. And um, come to find out, she was at Billy's house. So I got there, and, and Billy's parents were there. Um, Billy's daughter was there, and Brittany was there. The police were there. And um, they were, the police were just standing at the door. They just weren't letting anybody in because Billy was still inside inside the house and um, I got there pr 
probably maybe hours after she had been gone or maybe even an hour, I don't know. I just know that what struck me is that there really wasn't any interaction between things what had happened to Billy and them just standing there really not being, and it's just me, but maybe not being concerned. And um, a, few, a few months ago, I heard about a, a woman dying of, of an overdose and her daughter was telling me that she didn't feel like it was getting the, um, it was just, oh well, it's just another drug addict. They were uh, homeless or they were a drug addict or something like that. And it was just, it's just like um, they've made some bad decisions. Um, they don't, they, they chose. And so we're not gonna give it any importance and we're not going to um, really talk about it. And it's like, for me, yesterday for me, I felt like Billy wasn't important. I felt like Billy wasn't seen for who she was. And as I sat there with her mom and her dad, and I heard her daughter crying, I felt like they weren't heard and they weren't seen either. And I thought how many times it, that I haven't been concerned. You know, someone has passed away and just because of the circumstances of their death, I haven't thought of how it's impacted everybody else. And Billy's death, Billy's life, both of those should impact people. Both of those because they certainly have impacted the parent. And one thing that really got to me yesterday is when her parents thanked us, thanked us at Bridges, and it hurt, because I thought, she's gone. We could have, we should have done more, but they looked at me and they said, but you gave us back our daughter for a bit. You gave us back, we saw our Brittany again. That's what I would like other people to see, not to see that that's a person that's an addict. That's a person that's tattooed up. They're all, you know, they're out of their mind with drugs or whatever. And I've done the same thing. I've looked at them and I've walked away, moved away, but I haven't thought about who that person's life is touching. I would love to think that Billy's life might be over, but it's still gonna to touch people. It's still gonna make people know there is hope. I, we've listened today to girls that talk about their lives have been changed. And those are wonderful changes. But we also have to think about the ones that we can't change we have to keep trying for the mothers. A mother should never bury her child. And that mother should never say goodbye. They just shouldn't. Ten years ago, 20 years ago, I was busy with my own life. I didn't take time to really get to know people. I was busy with my own life but being involved with these girls has changed my life. There's times that I wanna pull my hair out and do a little bit of slapping around because it's like, can't you see? Um, but they've changed my life. Even the ones that's walked away and said, this is not for me, I'm still touched by it. I still try to reach out and encourage them to go have help. But it's also made me feel like I know these people are human. They're people that um, I want to be more like Jesus. You know, he could look past your past and he could see potential. 
He didn't care if you were a prostitute. He just didn't. He just loved you because he knew that's what you did. That's not who you are. And I get that when I'm with those girls. I tell them all the time. I tell them all the time. They'll say things about their, and I go, that's what you did. That's not who you are. That's, that's, a, that's a Jesus thing. Don't you think? <laughs>